The Yosemite Firefall is one of the most spectacular natural phenomenon in the national park system. Each year, roughly from mid to late February, when the setting sun hits the face of El Capitan at just the right angle, the ephemeral horsetail fall appears as if ablaze, as if it is literally on fire. Now, in order for this firefall to appear, a couple things have to happen. Number one, horsetail fall has to actually be flowing. It's an ephemeral waterfall and will only flow if there has been enough snowpack throughout the winter to produce enough meltwater to form a waterfall. And that's the other thing. Number two, the temperatures can't be too cold or else that meltwater won't melt. No meltwater means no waterfall. And number three, you have to have clear skies. Even a light haze or clouds can obscure the phenomenon, which for the thousands of visitors that come to see it can really extinguish their enthusiasm. No, I hated that too. Leave your best fire puns in the comments below though. Also, firefall is only visible for like 10 minutes each day. So yeah, if you can't see it, your spirits are probably going to be dampened. I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Although I'm not because I literally wrote that into the script. Uh, so yeah, this is all well and good though. Like I said, one of the best natural phenomenon in the national park system. Oh, and there are some changes for this year. So if you're planning to visit to see Firefall, check out the link in the description for more info. But what if I told you there used to be another Firefall in Yosemite? Yep. And that they used to push, oh my God, they used to push a literal bonfire off a cliff. I just, I can't sometimes with these pushing bonfires off cliffs, feeding bears garbage. Yosemite tried to host the Olympics that one time. People are stealing cacti from Big Bend. It's, it's a mess out there. But yes, let me tell you the story of when they used to push bonfires off cliffs in Yosemite National Park. Jesus. <laughs> Waiting fire tenders push the coals over the brink. Silently, the glowing cascade fans out into a fiery cataract. So this OG firefall, like the bonfire one, started sometime around 1872, which was before Yosemite was even a national park, although Yosemite was first protected back in like 1864 by Abraham Lincoln, just not as a national park. So it kind of predates Yellowstone in that way. It's weird and complicated, and I should honestly probably do a video about it. So let me know if you want to see that in the comments down below. But okay, 1872. This guy by the name of James McCauley owned a hotel up on Glacier Point called the Mountain House Hotel. That's one difference here, besides the whole bonfire thing. Today's modern firefall takes place on El Capitan. It's an actual waterfall, horsetail falls. The OG firefall, the bonfire one, took place on top of Glacier Point, a little ways up the valley, and there was no water involved. And Macaulay basically started it as a 4th of July celebration. He owned this hotel and some people wanted a fireworks display. But instead of fireworks, he had the grand idea to push a bonfire off a cliff. And so began Firefall. For a fleeting moment, its beauty holds you spellbound. Then you gather it up as your most treasured memory of Yosemite. This became really popular, and pretty soon Macaulay figured out he could make money off of it. So he began charging $1.50 to see the Firefall. Firefall then went away for a while. Macaulay lost his hotel, and he actually ended up dying in a carriage accident in the Yosemite Valley in 1911. A carriage accident. Can't believe he used to drive carriages around. Those things are so dangerous. Soon though, Firefall was to make a return, and what a return it was. This guy named David Curry, owner of the famous Camp Curry, brought it back as a full-blown spectacle. Now, Curry was not exactly what we would call the leave no trace kind of guy. He wanted to build a golf course in the Yosemite Valley, and he advocated for several dams to be built that would actually keep Yosemite's waterfalls flowing year round. He had no qualms about manipulating Yosemite scenery to capture those sweet, sweet tourism dollars. 
Firefall was no different, and he built this insane show around it. For one thing, it happened every night now at 9 p.m. sharp. He also hired someone called a fire master to manage the fire up on Glacier Point, and they used a special type of wood, red fur, because it supposedly produced the best embers. Then they did this chant thing. It went something like this. Hello, Glacier Point! Hello, Camp Curry! Is the fire ready? The fire is ready! Let the fire fall! The fire is falling! I'm not, I'm not gonna light a fire on my own roof, but after this chant thing, they would basically just push the fire over the cliff and sing songs, and people were known to cry over this thing. I'm telling you, it was a whole thing. It was a huge spectacle. It was even this fruit company that put Firefall on its produce label? So people were just out here buying fruit with Firefall on it? It was, it was wild. Oh, and yeah, by this time, Yosemite was a full-blown national park back in 1890, which today, I mean, it's kind of hard for us to comprehend that they would like do this in a national park. Like, oh my god, that's a national park. What are they doing? But it was a different time back then. I've talked about this on the channel before, like with the Yellowstone grizzly feeding, but national parks back then were basically a tourist attraction. And things like Firefall did a lot to bring tourists to the park and generate interest in them. It was just kind of the attitude at the time. But as tends to happen with attitudes, they can change. And after World War II, our attitude toward parks and conservation changed. I've talked about this on the channel before too, but basically we shifted our park management strategies to more of what we see today. Preservation, leave no trace, emphasizing natural features, wildlife conservation, stuff like that. And so in 1968, NPS director George Hartzog, who promoted this sort of management, was like, Firefall is no more. He said it was an artificial spectacle that belonged in an amusement park, not a national park. He encouraged the park to adopt more interpretive programs like nature walks and to emphasize the park's natural resources rather than relying on the artificiality of the Firefall. Also, people were trampling meadows and the traffic was horrible. Gee, I wonder what that's like. And so he put a stop to it. On January 25th, 1968, the last firefall fell. The NPS put out this incredible press release, which I just have to read to you. They say, quote, the firefall, a fancy of James McCauley's that caught on and was popular for almost a hundred years died Thursday, January 25th, 1968, in a blazing farewell. It was a dandy firefall, fat and long, and it ended with an exceptionally brilliant spurt, the embers lighting the cliff as they floated slowly downward. There weren't many people around to watch, maybe 50. Hardly any congestion at all. I mean, this is like part obituary, part glowing praise, part snarky backhanded compliment. I just, I, I don't know what to even say about that, but it is glorious. But yeah, Firefall was dead, basically. Until five years later, when the first photo of the modern Firefall was taken, thus rekindling the legend of Firefall. Y'all thought I was done, huh? Well, I am, because the video is over now. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want more park stories. Follow me on Instagram and check out my newly revamped Patreon over at patreon.com slash National Park Diaries if you want more of whatever this is. Thanks for watching. See you later. Goodbye. Fire is falling! <laughs>